Uh, hi everyone and welcome back to the series of uh, outdoor insulators. Uh, so today we'll talk about something very important in outdoor insulators and more specifically to polymeric insulators and uh, even more specifically silicon rubber insulators, uh, which is dry band arcing. And here there are some images showing the dry band arcing on the on the surface of the insulators, and this is how the measured current or the dry band arc and how it look like in time domain and in frequency in frequency domain so to start with as we know non ceramic insulators uh, and especially uh, silicon rubber has many advantages among them is the hydrophobicity the lightweight vandalism vandalism resistance and so on and so forth however the main issue the major problem with uh, those insulators is aging. Aging is the huge problem that these insulators suffer from. And this aging can take minor uh, forms like choking or crazing like this one, or even more serious ones like erosion. We can see here the rubber is has been eroded from the surface of the insulator to complete failure of the of the insulator. Now, what are the causes of aging in outdoor insulators and specifically non-ceramic insulators? We can classify uh, the major contributors to the aging as electrical discharges and environmental conditions, and somehow these two factors they work uh, together and enhance each other uh, to, in the aging process for electrical discharges there are two forms of discharge corona and dry band arcing and from the environmental conditions the most severe ones are the uv and the humidity now in this uh, presentation we'll talk about specifically dry band arcing but before uh, talking about it let's just have a small clip and go and see a demonstration of the dry band arcing on a silicon rubber rod where there is continuous wetting by a conductive electrolyte and then come back and we will explain what is uh, going on very clear Come back. Okay, we have seen this dry band, band arcing on the surface, but you notice that there was a continuous wetting, and when whenever the wetting stops, you will see that the dry band arcing extinguished. Okay, and in reality, this never happened. You don't have something like this uh, wetting the uh, the insulators. So we'll try to answer three fundamental questions: How wetting can happen on non-ceramic insulators? How dry band arcing is formed after the wetting? Because to have a dry band arcing, you have to have a wetting. So first, how the wetting happens, and then how dry band arcing is, is formed. And finally, how the dry band arcing will lead to the insulator aging. So to start with, when we look to the uh, an insulator in a healthy condition, hydrophobic, we see that here the water droplets are discrete, far away from each other. So there is no way that you will have a leakage current leading to dry band arcing. Okay, so first I have to have a wetted surface. Okay, now how we can have the wetted surface, we can tell that as the following. Okay, so now we have, this is a water droplet. This is like a side view with a uh, dielectric constant equal to 80 on the surface of the insulator with a dielectric constant between three to four and an air dielectric constant of one. Now this point called the triple point, which is the uh, junction point between water, air and the insulator, will have a very high electric field here, very high enhanced field at this, at this point. And this can affect the uh, wetting on the surface in two different ways. If the field is high enough, uh, then it might trigger corona on the surface, or at least it will lead to the 
uh, elongation of the water droplet. So you see here, uh, this water, now this is the water droplet now here, and then start to elongate these water droplets. Now when they start to elongate, adjacent water droplet will start to merge together and start to have more and more wetting, wetting region on the surface of the uh, of the insulator. So we start as a hydrophobic surface with a contact angle more than 90. Now with aging coming from the environmental conditions, but also from the enhanced of the field at these at these points, then you will start to have water elongation. So the surface become like more and more hydrophilic. And when you see like a top view, uh, this is the top view of the uh, silicon rubber material with condensation of water. And then after the application of, uh, of high voltage, we'll see here now, we'll start to see that those water droplets start to merge together and we have a bigger and bigger and bigger water droplets until we have like a wet surface on the, on the insulator. Now, if we have a wet surface, this is the first start. Now, how we will have a dry band arc? So now when we have a wet surface, this is a high voltage, and this is a ground, you will have a leakage current on the surface. Okay, and this leakage current, it is a sinusoidal, a resistive current, and it's not really damaging, has no damaging effect. However, the density of this current is not uniform all over the surface. So in certain areas, it has high dense leakage current more than others. Now, this high dense leakage current will have dual heating. So the water will start to evaporate and we will have a, what we call dry bands. So we have a wetting, but then we have dry bands. Now what is happening here is the high voltage will be extended until it reached to this, this the dry band. And this is the ground will also extend until it reached to this side. So now we have a very high electrical stress over a small band of dry surface, then it will start to have arcing on the surface. And this is why it's called dry band arcing. So what we have seen in the video is just this. This is, this is what is happening on the surface. And this, the dry band arcing, is the one that has distorted leakage current and is the one that has a damaging effect on the surface. How? There are three different ways that dry band arcing can damage the surface. There is the heat, and this is the most important one, and this will call thermal degradation or depolymerization of the of the material. So this is uh, uh, will cause mainly erosion on the surface of the insulator. Also, because of the arcing nature, there will be a UV coming out of the arcing, and this UV also will cause some damages to the chain of the polymer back backbone. And finally, also you will have an ozone coming out and also ozone will do some uh, oxidative uh, reactions. So all these three factors will work together and they will cause aging, damaging to the surface of the insulators. Now the degree of the damage, the degree of the aging, it depends on the level of dry band arcing, the uh, amount or the time the insulator is subjected to the, to the dry band arcing. So this is like a short summary about what is dry band arcing and how it happens and affect non-ceramic insulators.